So I'm ready to move on to the final stage of the amplifier. First though, I thought I'd walk through some uh, playing around I've been doing with the uh, bias arrangement of the second stage. And just a quick reminder of that bias arrangement, it's these, uh, this trio of 56 ohm resistors right here. If you recall from the last video, the 2SC1971, which was at the heart of the second stage, was running super hot, and uh, I'd calculated a quiescent current of around uh, 400 milliamps. Uh, and that was with uh, the, that original 56-56-56 resistor divider arrangement. So I've got two uh, additional configurations that I tried here. Uh, and this is from starting from the top here. So when I'm reading them out uh, left to right, it goes from uh, the top to the bottom here. Um, and so I tried two combinations, one 560-560-180 and the second one 560-560 and 220. And you can see the results here. So I've got uh, you know, f uh, five or so columns here. Uh, the first one is with an 80 milliamp uh, peak to peak input signal. Uh, this is the collector of the 2SC1971, uh, so 23.6 volts peak to peak. Um, after T2, so going back to the schematic, so here's two T, T2 here. So after T2, measuring right here, uh, that gives uh, a three volt peak to peak signal. Uh, base voltage, uh, now this is with a quiescent, so no, no input signal, 1.13 volts and an emitter voltage of 0.46 volts. And given that that uh, the resistor on the emitter is a 5.1 ohm resistor, it's easy to calculate the quiescent current there. So you can see those, those two experiments there, um, 180 uh, uh, at the, uh, the base and 220 at the base, and here's the results. Now I'll include a link um, to, the, uh, to this spreadsheet here on my Google Drive, uh, but what, what I think I'll do is I'll run with this bottom configuration it seemed to give sort of a, a best performance uh, between obviously uh, lower quiescent current and uh, you know obviously this quiescent current in, in my opinions seems way too high for that transistor. Okay so let's move on to the final stage now so I've already tacked in the two IRF 530s um, the only other thing to do is to this some oops it's out of out of camera there uh, include the, the kind of feedback circuitry here and here, uh, get those installed. I also, I, I will be installing this uh, transistor on the reverse side of the, of the board too. Um, so let me get on, I'll install all this and we'll come back and do some testing. One final note before we move on, uh, there are two further um, uh, transformers to wind or, or, or coils to wind. There's L1, which is an RFC coil, uh, on the output, and then there is T3, which is this center tapped arrangement right here. And uh, the turns winding is, uh, in this case, it's four on the output to a pair of one turns on the input. So I'll get that all installed and we'll come back and do some testing. Okay, so here's a close up of that 2SC1971 uh, soldered back in on the underside there. Uh, and as you can see, the a collector and emitter emitter leads are very oh, focus. Sorry about that. Are very close together, so you just got to make sure they're not touching. But anyway, uh, that's installed, and I've tested it, and it looks like it's working fine. So I'll move on to uh, installing the uh, the other circuitry around the uh, MOSFETs. So here's all the SMD components installed. I did have to lift this. Uh, uh, MOSFET out of the way so it could get access to down here, but uh, that was uh, you know relatively straightforward. Uh, all these caps are the 103s or the 10 nanofarad uh, caps here, so you don't have to worry about which is which. And then you've got these f two 5.6 ohm resistors which go here in R6 and R7. Uh, note that 220 ohm resistors actually go on the other side of the of the board, uh, and they're the big. Uh, I think they're two or three watt resistors. But anyway, uh, let me move on to the next stage. I'll install those uh, uh, 200 ohm resistors and then we'll come back. Okay, so here's those uh, two 220 ohm resistors installed. Sorry for the focus there. Note you are supposed to leave a little bit of space between the resistors and the PCB for cooling. Although uh, when I looked at uh, the kind of current through this uh, in LT Spice, it didn't seem to be a whole, whole lot of current. So, uh, but anyway, 
Uh, that's those two res resistors installed. Uh, what I'm going to move on to next is uh, kind of this final um, binocular core here, T3. Um, so that's, uh, like I said, four windings on the output and one winding each on the, on the two inputs. And that's center tapped, so uh, that, that should be pretty easy to wind. L1 is a T5043 with, uh, I believe, about 10 turns on it. And uh, we're getting pretty close to uh, completion here. So uh, anyway, I'll get those wound and put on the board. I thought I'd go through uh, some detail on how you put together uh, T3. Um, and T3 on the circuit diagram consists of uh, these two primaries here. So you've got one turn and one turn. And then four turns on the secondary out here. So this goes off to the antenna. And this input here and this input here comes from the MOSFET. So the four turns is easy. You wind that as you would do a typical uh, binocular core. Got uh, four turns, so each pass through the center is one turn. So I've got that set up and the enamel stripped. The two one turns on the other hand are a little bit different. I've kind of got them arranged so, so you can see it here. So they both go through um, the uh, binocular core here, but you've got to make sure that the end of this winding goes to the start of the other winding so it's the end of this the the, the this is the start of winding two it's got the dot on it uh, this is the end of winding one so you've got to make sure that the that they're oriented that way so what effectively what you'll see is it'll come out this side and there'll be effectively a crossover so i'll get that wound on and uh, come back okay so here's the uh, the semi-finished product so here's uh here's winding one so it comes in here and goes out here and here's winding two it goes in here and comes out here and so when you end up soldering this together you should have continuity straight through from here to here and obviously you should have continuity from here to here as well and no continuity between any of these windings and this winding so what i'll do is i'll get that installed on the board oh well actually i'll i'll Solder this on and then we'll uh, check continuity and then uh, come back. All right, so here we go. So I should have continuity between uh, these two leads here. It's hard behind the camera, my apologies. There we go. All right, we've got continuity there. Should have continuity through to there and continuity on the other side here. Oh, this is harder than I thought. And no continuity over to here. As you can see, well, let me get that. Uh, so that's right. So there's no continuity over there. So that's uh, T3 wound. Uh, I'll get that on the board. I'll wind uh, uh, L1 and uh, there's a couple more caps to install and then we, we should be ready to test. Okay, so here's uh, all those components installed there. You can see his uh, T3, his L1, 10 turns on a, a T5, I, th I think it's a T5061 actually. Um, anyway, um, uh, the only other thing is these two uh, 100 picofarad uh, 1206 capacitors go right here and here and note the orientation of that. Uh, of that. So that's pretty much uh, all ready to go. I'll uh, kind of hook it up and uh, let's get some testing done. Okay, so we're ready for, with, for the first big test. Uh, one of the things I did off camera is uh, kind of set the bias of both the... Uh, uh, of both the MOSFETs, so there's a gate voltage around about 3.3 volts on the gate of each of the MOSFETs there. Did a little bit of fiddling around there to get that right. Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, one viewer, Alex, uh, reminded me I shouldn't be using those uh, wire-wound uh, 50 ohm resistors as a dummy load. So I've got this uh, arrangement here, copied this off uh, QRP Labs, had one, it's basically 21k uh, uh, resistors all in parallel so this gives me about a, a, a 10 watt uh, dummy load here which should be more than enough for some short tests so let's have a look at the traces on the oscilloscope before i do that uh, i haven't put this on the heat sink yet um, so i'm obviously going to have to do some fairly quick tests there um, otherwise those mosfets are going to burn up so anyway uh, I'll do some initial tests and uh, we'll see what we see and uh, then I'll probably put it on the heatsink and do some more strenuous tests. Alright, so here we go, uh, first test here. And as you can see there, about 50 volts peak to peak. I'm, I'm just doing it quickly because I don't have it on the heatsink for the moment. So, And that's with uh, 80 millivolts peak to peak on the input. Let's turn that down a bit to 
50 millivolts peak to peak on the input. And you can see there that's about 23 volts uh, peak to peak. So promising so far. Uh, what I'm going to do now is let me get out, get that all out on the heat sink so I can do some, uh, uh, some, some longer tests. Okay, so here's the uh, amplifier connected to the heat sink. So the screws through each of the the, the IRF 530s as well as the uh, 2SC 1971. So it's all hooked up. Uh, signal comes in here. Signal exits here. Uh, these wires are probably a little too thin for uh, for what I'm doing, but uh, it's good enough for short testing. So let's uh, have a look on the oscilloscope. Okay, so. Uh... I've got about uh, 13 and a half volts coming in as supply source, 50 millivolts peak to peak, let's uh, at 14 megahertz, so let's have a look at that. So there's uh, 50 millivolts peak to peak, 42 volts uh, out. Let's get, ramp that up to, we're now on 80 millivolts peak to peak, and you can see that that's uh, 70 volts uh, peak to peak on the amplifier output. Now, as you can see from the signal, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, harmonic content in there. Uh, it's certainly far from a pure sine wave. Uh, just a note, I am running the uh, the gate voltage on the IRF 530s is about uh, uh, running at about 3.5 volts. Um, and I've noticed any more than that, uh, the the signal does become a little more linear, but unfortunately there's some weird behavior as you lower the uh, the input, um, you start to get this, uh, what looks like self oscillation. Uh, so let me actually just show that to you, uh, bear with me. Okay, so now I'm running at about 3.75 volts, uh, and you'll notice things look start to look uh, uh, dreadful as I lower the, uh, the input voltage. Uh, let me just turn that off there. So definitely there's a certain point uh, past which you uh, get what seemed to be self oscillation. Um, there was a spot on the circuit uh, to um, uh, to include a, a dampening resistor, so I may give that a go. Um, but uh, I guess uh, the result is uh, the amplifier is working. Uh, let me just uh, show you how an AM signal looks like through this, and then uh, we'll probably wrap the video. Okay, so let me uh, run an AM signal through that. Let's have a look what we what we can see. So this is a uh, let me hit the run stop there. So this is a, a 14 megahertz uh, AM signal. The uh, modulation frequency is two kilohertz. AM depth is 30 percent. So uh, you can see there that that's uh, that's quite a, a a nice linear signal there. Let's. Uh, let me just increase the AM depth. Uh, as I go up, you'll you'll actually see that linearity go away. So I'm going to go up to around about 70% AM depth. Let's turn that on again. Hit run stop. And we can see the AM signal. Now we're getting sort of significant distortion there. Um, primarily at the bottom here. I mean, with 70% 70, 70 depth, it shouldn't be uh, getting that close to the, to the crossover point. Um, but anyway, um, a reasonable output from there. You can see uh, the peak to peak is around about 56.4 volts. Um, so that's an AM signal. Um, I'll probably wrap this uh, video for, for now. Um, I, I think there's, uh, you know, this was a fun kit, uh, definitely. Uh, lots of interesting little uh, troubleshooting to do. Um, whether you get uh, anywhere near 45 watts out of this, I, I, I very much doubt. Um, uh, I was able to get, you know, between 60 to 70 volts peak to peak, which is around about uh, 10 watts output with reasonable linearity. Or I haven't, although that's just sort of uh, gut feel rather than any measurements. Um, I, I can't imagine how you would get 45 watts output out of this. Um, and I am using a pretty beefy heat sink, so, uh, um, so, so there's that. Um, of course, what you could do is increase the gate voltage, but uh, as you saw from uh, kind of the, the, the previous section, once you start increasing that gate voltage, you get uh, you get that uh, kind of strange self oscillation out of it. So, so anyway, uh, this is a wrap for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video series. Um, fun little kit. Um, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it anyway. Uh, I've included a link uh, earlier to to the kit if you want to check it out. Uh, and as I as I mentioned before, I'm not affiliated in any way with this, so uh, uh, I purchased this with my own money. But anyway, um, that's all for now. I uh, hope you enjoyed this series.